are going to be working on making some pumpkin pie soap bar. So it's a new recipe and one I've kind of concocted out of a couple other recipes for pumpkin soap. We will be using goat milk and local tallow that is produced. This batch actually came from our neighbor's farm. At least the fat did and we rendered the tallow ourselves here. Now the first thing we do to get started, because we use milk that is frozen, I always start with melting the tallow first. See here, we have the tallow. It's already been weighed out and in the bowl melting. I do a pan, kind of a broiler system, since I don't have an actual broiler first. Just got some water underneath there to help get it melted. Now while this is getting started, we're gonna measure out the rest of our ingredients. I always like to pre-measure all the ingredients to kind of make the process go smoother and quicker. So you're definitely always gonna want a scale to weigh everything out. I choose to do grams because it's an easy process. I make sure everything's in grams before we get started. And then we'll start measuring everything out. The three main fats I like to use is tallow, coconut oil, and olive oil. We look for organic so that we can ensure we have a top quality product. For this particular recipe, we are doing 300 grams of coconut. Checking on our tallow. So you can see it's starting to heat up here. Doing it this way helps ensure that it's not going to burn. All right, let's get back to measuring. Next, we are going to measure our goat milk. So I always freeze goat milk into ice cubes before getting started. I just left it in that bag. So for this, we're gonna need 253 grams of coconut, coconut, sorry, goat milk. As you can see, it's frozen and just ice cubes. Let's see how that works. Ooh, perfect. Now 
now we're going to put lye in a separate bowl so we can slowly add it. It sounds like our tallow is going a little bit on, you can hear the water boiling quite a bit, so we're gonna check it out too. Mm, yeah, it's melting really good. We're going to measure out our lye for this project. And for the lye, we need 140 grams. you mess with lye, you should have gloves on to ensure you're not going to burn your skin. It's a very helpful protocol to keep in mind. I always put a little water in with our goat milk cubes. This helps when the lye hits it, it immediately goes ahead and starts that chemical reaction, which then heats up and helps melt the ice cubes, the goat milk. So we just simply start with, we just do 14 grams or around about that. This recipe already has a water reduction done in it, so if we get a little extra, it's not a huge deal. All right, now let's check on our tallow. Did you see here the tallow is almost all the way melted? And because of this, it's gonna be quite a warm temperature. So what we're gonna go ahead and do, is we're gonna go ahead and shut off the heat. So. And then we're gonna add our coconut milk. Goodness gracious. We're gonna add our coconut oil to the tallow. Now we have the coconut oil in here and this will melt quite quickly, which will keep the temperatures quite warm. Outside now and we're gonna take our lye and mix it with our coconut oil cubes. Goat milk cubes. Wow. Be sure to follow the recipe and not what I'm saying. We're going to do a little bit at a time. This helps prevent the milk from getting scolded. getting quite chilly out here in fall. We can move this around. As you can see, the chemical reaction is causing it to heat up, and that is melting our goat milk cubes. So we're gonna keep stirring. We're gonna wait for it to mix up. And if you have noticed, we came outside to ensure we had plenty of air so we're not breathing in the fumes from the chemical reaction that's occurring. We'll keep stirring this until all of our lye is dissolved and our cubes are all liquid. So it takes just a few minutes. Let's keep stirring. We are back inside. You can see the coconut oil is almost completely melted. Our lye solution is melted. You can see this little stuff on the edge 
that's not a thing to be worried about. I know most people are going to say that that's the lye that has not been mixed in. However, these are actually the particles from the goat milk. It always tends to leave those little chunks. Those are the good things that you want. Now, I like to have my lye solution and my fats within about 10 degrees of each other. So we're getting pretty close. So what I'm going to do is we're going to add in our olive oil. And I kind of want to scrape the bowl with our uh, rubber spatula to ensure we're getting all of that in there. All right, once you have it all in there, you're going to mix together to blend all your oils. Should be getting pretty close. So we're at 95 here Ooh, and 94 there. So we are within that 10 degrees. So now we're going to add the to our soap. This is actually a neat process. I'm going to try holding so you guys can see. Kind of combining. I'll have to scrape this in just a second. So we want to make sure we get all that. As you see it go through, see how it's changing? That is the spawnification that is occurring. So we got, as you can see here, we got an immersion blender. We're going to take and put it in here at an angle and then go down. We want to make sure we get all of the air bubbles out of that. <laughs> continue going and getting thicker. I typically do 30 minutes with the immersion blend, 30 minutes, 30 seconds with the immersion blender on and then 30 seconds just moving it around with the hand. It gives the immersion blender a break so it does not overheat. And you'll keep doing this until you get it to trace. Now as you're doing this, it does tend to heat back up a little bit. See we're at 98 where we were at 95 and you'll continue to heat up as the chemical reaction occurs. Been doing this for a little while. You see it's starting to thicken up, so it won't be much longer now. As you can see now, we are down to trace. Lovely assistant to measure out our essential oils in our pumpkin. <laughs> we got the pumpkin added, so now we're just going to immersion blend it in to get it all mixed up. <laughs> to our molds. So we're gonna clean everything off here. You can see it's getting really thick, so it needs to be getting into our mold now. But I love how that turned out. It's got that pumpkin pie kind of look to it. like to hold. All right, 
once you got it in your mold. I like to try and smooth it out as best I can. Then I also kind of banging around, getting any of those air bubbles out. And then I like to add a little bit of decorativeness to everything. So we're just going to sprinkle a little pumpkin pie spice on the top of it. going to cover it. If you don't have a lid to go on top of it, use a piece of parchment paper and then put your towel over it. There you go. And you're going to leave it. Come back and check on it in an hour or so. You kind of want to keep an eye on it to make sure it is not cracking on top. If it starts to crack on top, then you need to move it to a cooler location or have a fan blowing on it because as it's going through gel phase, then it's getting too hot and it's going to end up doing a volcano. So make sure you check in on it every so often and you don't get that crack going through the middle. But thanks and check back us with us later as we take it out of the mold tomorrow.